Today on What It's Like, 1962 Plymouth Savoy. But first, a huge thank you to the JK Gallery of Classic and Pristine Cars in Salem, Ohio for making this for making this in-depth look possible. Link in the description below. So the next time you're in the Salem, Ohio region, check them out. They have a huge selection. Lots of different vehicles to look at there. So let's talk Savoy. When you first look at this car in all its entirety, if you're anything like me, you ask yourself, what happened? This was Plymouth at the end of the 50s, 1959 Plymouth Savoy. Just check out how clean the lines are. Look at the fins. This is a Virgil Exner design. He pioneered the forward movement. The uh, 62 Savoy is also penned by the same guy, Virgil Exner. Forward movement, last car that's considered to be the forward movement. But you have to ask yourself, what happened? So the story goes that William Newberg, who was the boss of Chrysler at the time, went to a garden party where Ed Cole was present, who was the boss at GM at the time. He overheard Ed Cole discussing the new Chevys and how they were on a smaller wheelbase and shorter overall. And Newberg panicked because Chrysler, you have to understand, Chrysler at this time was way ahead of everybody else in the design department, engineering department, in the 50s anyway. They're the ones that egged on all the rest of the competition to make bigger fins on their cars, even though Harley Earl was the first to put fins on a Cadillac. But it was actually Virgil Exner that made them into the fins that we remember today. He just kept egging on the competition to make bigger and higher fins. Well, anyway, Newberg panicked and went to Exner, who was the chief of design at this point, to resize the 62 model year to be smaller to compete with the new Chevys. Exner wanted to keep the original 62 design that they already made, but they ended up working 24 hours a day for a week to get the cars ready for production. So Chrysler was all in on the new, shorter design and I could only imagine the look on Newberg's face when he saw the 1962 Chevys. Later, it was found out that Ed Cole was referring to an all-new Chevy 2 series. They were still making full-size cars. This is a classic case in point that you believe nothing that you hear and only half of what you see. And poor Exner, he got fired over this. It doesn't say exactly what he got fired for. It just says that he got fired over a design dispute. It probably stems from this car. Newberg replaced... Exner with Elwood Engel from Lincoln after seeing the all-new Lincoln Continental with those stunning yet elegant lines and that was the direction that he wanted to go moving forward. Okay, let's get back to the 1962 Savoy. Did you notice the original design proposal a couple slides back? Imagine if that was the product. It would have changed everything because frankly the public did not receive the new Plymouth or Dodge for that matter well and and sales took a huge hit but looks are subjective even though I think this car is an ugly even though it was ugly it still had a lot going for it for starters it was a unibody construction meaning the car and the frame are one unit which makes the car in most cases lighter also used a torsion bar suspension plymouth called torsion air ride at no extra cost okay let's talk engines a little bit back i mentioned chrysler was at the forefront not those exact words but they were ahead of the curve in the styling and engineering department a couple more examples chrysler did a turbine engine program not getting into all the details in this episode just wanted to mention it they also worked on a cross ram intake idea on v8 engines two four barrel carburetors also known as dual quads the one on the left sits further back than the one on the right so the carbs sit across or diagonal from one another hence the name cross ram it is also worth mentioning they did a long tube intake cross ram where the carbs were more perpendicular to one another they also used the long tube intake on their special inline six that had a 30 degree slant to it and they dubbed it the slant six. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's any other company that made a slant six other than the Chrysler Corporation. In 1962, the Savoy, you could get the 225 slant six, 318 V8, 361 V8, 383 V8. Getting under the hood, this is one of the easier ones that I've ever done. But if you look up underneath here, you can see it and it works the opposite way. You just push it up. And it oh yeah, and they offered this 
413 cubic inch displacement, absolute legend of an engine. So legendary, the Beach Boys sang about this car, which went by the names of Max Wedge for Savoy and Superstock for the Belvedere. Plymouth offered more than one trim level for this same car. The only difference was uh, trim and options as far as like in the dashboard or different upholstery options you could get. The song Shut Down by the Beach Boys, 413 takes on a fuel injection Stingray, which is a Corvette, and beats it in the comments. Would the 413 beat it in reality? Also worth mentioning, Dodge had their own version called the Ram Charger. The 413 was available in two compression ratios, 11 to 1 and 13 and a half to 1. The 413 produced 425 horsepower and ran a 12-second quarter mile straight from the factory. It's also important to note, this car is for sale. Link is in the description, but this is a tribute car so it's not a real 413 car the engine that's actually in this is a 440 and it's just badged as a 413 it's a very heavy hood you don't even have to slam it you just push it right down and it shuts really nicely okay while we're up here let's talk about the front end notice uh how it curves the grill curves it almost looks like a wave no better yet, it looks like a snow shovel, how it curves. It's a very unique styling decision. I just wanted to show you a couple things real quick. This car's got a lot going on with it that pictures don't usually show you. Like, notice how this line comes up. The windshield isn't normal. It's not curved normal. It comes to a point, like right here. Which you could also see in the trunk. This car's got very unique styling. This was one of the last forward movement designs. This is a 62 Plymouth. Virgil Exner got fired right around here. But just notice how this juts out. It's a really unique design. I don't much care for this design, um, my opinion, but in person looks a whole lot better than in pictures. There's lots of different, there's lots of various lines going on like this. Chrome tri trim here just comes up and then it stops here and it goes up and, our, and back around. This juts out to where the door handle is and then it picks back up going towards the tail end people make fun of studebakers because they have that look like they're coming or going this right here to me almost looks like one of them hood ornaments coming at you but the front ironically front has something going on here too. It's just a very uniquely designed car. This is all turned almost like a wave. And these lights sit way back in here. Like there's my hand for reference. And up here it's got little little lines, dimples, I guess. Okay, let's talk about this door panel. You, it's very basic, you got an armrest, there's the handle to get out, the window crank, the vent window is operated manually, and it's got the lock on the top of the door in the back. Okay, now onto the dashboard. Um, to the very left you have the oil idiot light, there's an alternator gauge, a gas gauge. The one that's blank would be the clock if you got it. There's a temperature gauge. Check out the beautiful horn ring, huge speedo with odometer. And to the right, you have your climate controls, which I'm pretty sure this car doesn't have air conditioning, but the button's still there. It, it's very unique. Okay, moving down. Underneath the cluster of gauges, you have the brake release, and right to the right of that is your headlights. I totally forgot to talk about transmissions. With so many irons in the fire over at Chrysler, they only made three-speed transmissions at this point in time. You could have it in a manual 
or an automatic. The automatic was a push button style, which a lot of people thought the automatic is faster than the manual. In the comment section below, which one was faster? If you decided to get the uh, push button automatic, the push buttons were located to the left of the oil idiot light, and this is how it was uh, laid out. To the left of the ignition switch is the windshield wipers and windshield wiper washer. I just flipped down the ashtray. That's where the ashtray is. All the way over on the right hand side is a very nice sized glove box. Take a gander at the steering wheel. It doesn't have the traditional finger bumps. I don't know what you would call that. They almost look like lashes. Very interesting. Check out this bench seat. It looks like it has a 60-40 split. I don't know that for certain, uh, so don't quote me, but that's what it looks like. The seat also pivots when you push it up, just like the old Ford ones did and it gives you lots of access to get to the back seat. Just look at these keys. These keys look to be the original set of keys. It's almost like a lost art, just like how bands used to put art on record covers. Plymouth has two keys. One is a spare key for the door and the trunk. Getting into the trunk, you just put the key in the back and the trunk will pop open. Just take a look at this trunk. It's absolutely huge. It's not very deep, it's pretty shallow, but it's very, long and wide and that looks to be a full-size spare the gas filler is actually tucked behind the license plate thank you guys so much for watching be sure to check out my other videos if you like the content i invite you to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment until next time toodaloo